Hi everyone. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, thank you for coming almost to the last presentation before the party. Uh, so I'll do my best to be quick and not to get boring. Uh, a few words about me. And I'm sorry, this monitor it looks like is is not working. Yeah. So a few words about me. I'm a tester, sometimes a boxer, and always a husband and a father. But don't be afraid. Today I'll be talking only about the first point. OK, a few words about our company. Um, uh, it's a Sparasoft. It's a game development studio. Uh, we have offices in three countries. Uh, and our it's USA, Poland, and Russia. And our main development center is in St. Petersburg. OK. Uh, we offer several service lines. Uh, first of all, it's code development, and we'll talk about it more. Uh, the second thing is embedded team. Uh, it's like a group of our employees becomes part of a client's team. It's, it can be developers, art team, or QA. And the next thing is full cycle game development. Uh, we can provide everything, like starting from prototyping and finishing with launching. All right, moving next. Um, I would like to say that um, my presentation is not a Bible about code development or how to instruction. It's how we see it in Sparasoft. OK, moving on. And first of all, about code development, I would like to say that um, outsourcing development uh, was once an exotic thing, but now it's a core development approach for um, lots of companies. And in Sparasoft, outsourcing transformed into code development. And for us, uh, it means that, first of all, that working together with our partner uh, in this case, we are more engaged rather than just executing. And of course, for us, it means full ownership, but with some direction from our partner. And this is why code development for us is not a um, distributed development, like one company uses several offices and stuff like that. Uh, we are part of the team, but we have to earn the trust of our partner and provide smooth handoff. And of course, uh, it means that uh, we as a developers can participate on all stages of production, choosing tools, establishing the process, balancing not only the certain feature, but the whole game. All these things we are doing together with our partner. And also, uh, code development is not a standard. Uh, it's still evolving and changing. Uh, it means that something is going to work for one partner, but uh, probably not going to work for another. And my clicker is not working. I'm going to, I guess it's a QA lock. Uh, <laughs> Uh, OK, so let's take a look what QA uh, can do in code development. Uh, and in this section, I'm not mm, going to try to describe any development cycle. Uh, I'm going to just talk about what, as a QA engineers, we can do on certain stages. So first of all, it starts with an idea. And at this stage, uh, game designers can ask QA engineers um, just to look at their new feature and provide some feedback and uh, tell, for example, whether it's it going to be a problem for performance or stuff like that, or just to look at it uh, for, from player side. At the end of the day, uh, QA engineers know the game better than anyone in the team. OK, so when our idea is solid and well documented, the development process starts. At this point, uh, developers can ask for a quick test just to make sure that we are moving in the right direction. At this point, we're also starting, for example, writing our test cases. 
And when the feature is ready, the testing process starts, and the, at this point, we're working at full speed, uh, testing every aspect of the game. Uh, so the dev uh, and of course, create filing bugs so developers can have something to fix. Okay, when everything is checked and fixed, the launch process starts. At this point, we just make our pre-release tests, and that's it. And you might think that that's it. We can stop now. After that, the monitoring after the release monitoring pr process starts. At this point, we can gather. Um, feedback from our users, uh, raise some new issues, and fix them. OK, in code development, your team can be somewhere around 300 people. Uh, it's a common thing. And QA can be in different roles. First of all, it starts with the QA lead or manager. Uh, they're responsible for basically everything, but mostly uh, for planning, task distribution, testing itself when it's needed. Uh, then comes QA engineer, or some companies name it as a dev tester. Uh, they are responsible for, well, testing, and the idea is that uh, one test, dev tester, or a group becomes part of a development team, so they can provide uh, QA feedback to the team right away. Then comes another important role, especially for code development. It's QA coordinator. Um, they're responsible for providing info for all QA teams in all offices. For example, you're sitting in one office and you want to raise an issue but and to and add it in Jira, but you don't know who will be fixing it, so because it's in the, they are in, the, in another office. Uh, that will be the perfect question for QA coordinator. And also in code development, you may have acceptance testers. In most of the cases, they're on the client side. They do final tests and, um, for example, tests before the launch on a PlayStation network. Okay. Uh, Code development is not an easy thing, and you may have some issues. And so let's take a look at what challenges we face. First of all, in Sparasoft, the main challenge for us is that we, every time, we have to start right from the beginning. Uh, we have to uh, kind of mirror the process of our partner. And of course, it means that we won't have physical access for all employees. Uh, and after that comes the branching strategy. Uh, depending on the client, it can be completely different. In one case, it will be pretty simple, just one branch for everyone, and that's it. In the other case, it can be several branches for different offices and merging, manual merging at the end of the day. Uh, so yeah, it happens, and um, as a QA, I guess you just has to accept it. Different time zones is also a challenge. Uh, between, for example, Chicago and Moscow, it can be eight hours. So when you're finishing your workday, your partner is only starting. And of course, uh, one of the most important things, especially for QA engineers, it's duplicates. In code development, uh, on one project, it can be several QA teams in different offices. Uh, and duplicates uh, in Jira may confuse development team. For example, like three developers may fix one bug just because they have identical tasks. You, can, you are not going to fix a lot in this case. So let's take a look at solutions of these challenges. First of all, let your QA team to start as early as possible. At this point, uh, you may think, what should I do? Like, maybe create a test plan or read it? Yes, of course. But uh, in case if you have a, something ready, right at the start, like prototype or good reference, you can start just with playing, because it's a game development. And uh, we sometimes we do that, like 
uh, especially for newcomers, to start their first working day with a plane. Like I said, in case we have something to play. In this case, they're just going to learn the product better. Uh, beginning of the project is also a good time for learn your co-development partner. First of all, it's people, who's responsible for what, whom I will address my questions and stuff like that. And then comes, of course, technical part and the process, what tools we are going to use, uh, how we're going to test, actually, our game. Another solution, uh, regular communication. We think it's a key for co-development. And good communication works both ways. And we think that um, every member of your team should have an opportunity to express their views and opinions. And like I said, um, it's perfect when you have a QA point of contact, a coordinator, uh, who will kind of interlink all the teams. And of course, try to use single workflow uh, in the standards for QA teams. This is how you're going to um, get rid of the some duplicates. And uh, if they going to still present, it will be easy to find them because you're going to have a single naming convention. And of course, don't forget about playtesting uh, between team members. Uh, this, is a, this is how you're going to track how your game is changing. Of course, so uh, what else helps us to be an effective team? It's tools, of course. Yeah, but uh, to be fair, it's nothing special. It's uh, basically everything that everyone uses. Uh, first of all, it's bug tracker. In most of the cases, we use Jira. Yeah, it's the most popular tool, I guess. Of course, we use test management systems. Uh, in this case, the most popular is Test Rail. But when we don't have such option, we use something else like free tools, Tarantula, QA Touch, or even Excel. This stuff happens. And of course, we use editor in the engine. Um, it doesn't fully replace testing in builds, but at least helps to test your feature faster. As a QA engineers, we also use version control systems a lot. And in this case, uh, the most popular per force, I guess. And it's great when you have, uh, in code development, you have a separate uh, tools team that can build tools specially for you uh, to speed up your process and so you get rid of uh, some regular tasks. Uh, they can provide you screenshot tool, crash reporting tool, stuff like that. And of course, in code development, communication tools are also important. But um, in this case, uh, you may have like a variety of tools. You, you're going to have three Slack channels, two email accounts, two calendars. And from all these channels, you're going to receive important information. OK, uh, now I have a question to you. Uh, what do you think is the most important aspect in development overall? And we have a contest here. The first one who gets the right answer wins a power bank. So any guesses? Just You can just tell them and I'm sorry? Success? No, well, it's important, but we think that's another thing. So that's, huh? Testing. Yeah, testing is, of course, is important. And, but uh, try to see it like uh, in a kind of different way. I'm sorry, division, you said? Right vision for whom? You're, you're close, but it's not the vision, but what's maybe one more guess? To have some uh, goal like, in the end, to have like, uh, some purpose steps. 
No, we think that the most important thing in development is people. Uh, yeah, good question. I guess he's in a, he's in an opposite team. Maybe not. <laughs> but Tachanka is also important uh, in marketing purposes, especially. So yeah, people in code development is a uh, really important thing. And when you want to build a code development team, uh, your team members should be able to listen to ex uh, to listen to different opinions and views, being able to accept something. Uh, good communication skills is also a really important thing for QA engineers. And you should be able to, of course, share knowledge. But sometimes it's hard to find such people. For example, I used to work uh, with a QA engineer, a very experienced guy, uh, but it turned out he couldn't communicate with anyone without arguing with him. So he got used to one process and that's it and couldn't adapt to, uh, to different views and different processes. And in code development, we always work with, uh, with, with something different, something new for us and we have to adapt to it. When we can't, uh, because we can't always find such people, we're trying to uh, to, inv to invest uh, into people inside the company. We, we used to have regular knowledge sharing meetings. Um, it's when QA engineers and analysts from completely different areas gather together and share their experience. We also do mentoring a lot and uh, as a result, uh, for example, play tester can become a QA engineer or QA engineer can become, after all, a technical artist. And we also think that rotation between departments and projects is also a good thing uh, that helps to motivate people. Okay, to summarize my presentation, I would like to say that um, outsourcing paved the way uh, and transformed into code development. Uh, code development is basically all about uh, mirroring the process of your partner and adapting to something new. It has some challenges, of course, but don't be afraid of them. I told you how to solve them. And of course, the most important thing is what? People and clear communication between them. Uh, also, uh, let your QA team to start as early as possible. They can be effective on all stages. And use single approach, of course, for all QA teams. Try at least. And that's basically it. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Or you can just find me right over there after the presentation and um, we can okay. speak about um, quality assurance and code development. I have yeah. one question then. Um, yeah. You said that uh, people are the most important, but also you were talking about some tools which were yeah. used by QA and by developers and stuff. And um, I wanted to ask, like, what do you think about internal tools when uh, some tools are only created for such one project? Yeah. If is it like good approach to like uh, spend time on it or use some uh, other other um, uh, tools which were already created and uh, pay for them because you need to uh, actually pay for them to use them. Um, so we think it's great that you, when you have a kind of reusable tool uh, that if something works for one project. It can be effective for another too. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so it's and we really think it it's not necessary always to pay for something new and expensive just because everyone uses. So yeah, test rail is a great tool, but it's the price is sky high. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what what other tools would you use instead of test rail, for example? Well, uh, free ones. 
that are not so convenient, but well, Tarantula, for example, uh, it's free, and uh, QA Touch, it's a web web uh, test man test management system, um, or Excel even. For some purposes, in some cases, Excel can be effective. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I have one question. Oh, thanks for your presentation. Uh, can you just, maybe for not everyone, it's a little bit obvious, but what's the difference between QA engineer and playtester, and why it's engineering, actually? So what set of skills should you obtain? Um, between uh, like software engineer, like a developer, you mean? No, I mean between QA engineer and playtester. And playtester? Yeah. Well, I think that uh, QA engineer, first of all, shouldn't become, uh, shouldn't become a playtester. And as far as I know, lots of companies using this approach. So you want to be able to you want to be a playtester. You can uh, you can be QA engineer. Like uh, you shouldn't be a QA engineer because of um, different view. Of, uh, of the testers, they always see bugs and play testers. Uh, the first point they, they they should see the fun part, whether it's fun or not. You can your game can be uh, can work really well without bugs and stuff, but it's not just fun. Okay. Yeah. Uh, as far as I know, you work with a lot of different companies, and mm -hmm. actually you have access to their systems, their tools. And is there a big difference between these companies in terms of level of the success? So sometimes you can have uh, full access to their gyra and test trail, sometimes no. Is there a big difference between them? Well, uh it always a big difference, I'd like to say, and uh, it always a big difference. Uh, sometimes you may have just uh, same tools, but completely different approach, completely different structure of a QA department, different roles, uh, and 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 for us, like I said, it's always about adapting. We have to accept what our partner uh, suggested. Is there any other question? Okay. Then thank you and okay. please applause. Thank you, guys. The most motivated people came to my topic. Yeah.